Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Analyst. We are in chapter 5 and we are looking at the sample questions from this chapter in this tutorial. So let's look at the very first question here. So I'm taking a very complex like uh, you know scenario based question this time and uh, as this chapter is small and we have only two topics to discuss so we have kept the limitation on the question as well but let's look at a better question. You are reviewing the following uh, requirement specification document which has certain details as you can see object, author, document, uh, version, subsystem, date written, system and use case applicable to project. Yes. And there are certain descriptions which are provided about uh, the requirement which we are talking. So you can see the details here. We'll come back to it. But following, let's see what we have in the question. The following is the checklist you're using for the review. So we're talking about checklist in reviews. Of course, the question will be related to that. Uh, there are certain checklist uh, entities. Is, a, is each requirement testable? Does each requirement have acceptance criteria? And many other things. You are reviewing the specification above with the provided checklist. Assume you have access to the document that provides more information about the screen layout. So that's an add-on information over the requirement and the checklist. Which of the item on the checklist are not met by the specification? So at the end of the day, we need to compare the requirement and the checklist provided to us and see that what is not basically met as a part of this particular uh, reviewing. So let's compare the requirement and the checklist side by side here and understand whether it is done or not. So here we have is each requirement testable? Uh, yes, it is testable because it has been detailed and provided information with. Does each requirement have acceptable criteria listed? So if you see, uh, it is defined by how many characters, how many ID, number of digits. So it is defined that what is the criteria to be met. So we can say, yes, the requirement acceptance criteria is listed. Is a use case calling structure available? So for this point itself, we have provided to you that if you see on the top here, use case applicable to project, yes. But in the description, we don't see any use case calling structure. So it means that uh, it is actually not valid as per the checklist. But if you remember in one of, uh, the, at the end of the question, it was mentioned that uh, you have access to screen layout and also that would give you the access to use case. So we accept that third is also a part of uh, provided it is meeting. Number four, are the requirements uniquely identified? Now, if you see, there are a few requirements uh, which are listed here, but not numbered. So that means once it is not numbered, it is not uniquely identified. That means there should be some requirement ID associated with each one of them. But number four is not met. Next, number five is the specification version. Yes, it is version. You can see on the top left, version is 0 0.23. So it is version, so five is uh, met. Number six, is there traceability visible from each requirement to the business marketing requirements? Until unless you have a versioning, oh sorry, the identification number for any of the entity, like, like requirement ID or test case ID or test specification ID, none of that can be traceable to any other entity. So you must uniquely identify any uh, specification or any such creation which you have as a part of your process to make it traceable to any other entity. So six is also not met. Number seven, is there traceability between the requirements and the use cases, if applicable? So now here we are talking about like in terms of, uh, oh, please ignore that functional correctness testing. That does not belong here. So traceability is, as I said you in statement six, that it is only valid subject to you have a unique identification for each one of them. So at the end of this, we find out that the number four, five, and seven is not met as per the criteria. So Sorry, number four, six, and seven is not met. So the right answer here is B. Let's look at the next question here. It's a simple one. You are a test analyst assigned to a project for the development of a new online banking application. You were asked to participate to the requirements review. For your individual preparation, you are given a checklist to help you to check the basic rules in requirement writing. The following is one of the requirement, like R034 having a requirement ID. Even a person unfamiliar with the software application must be able to make a bank transfer. Now here is something important to recall or understand is that here we're talking about unfamiliarity of a new person and he should be able to do a bank transfer. That is the requirement provided to you. 
Next, the following is an extract of the checklist which you are provided with to prepare on. The requirement must be testable. The requirement must have an identifier. The requirement must always show its version number. The requirements must show traceability to one or more business marketing requirements. Without further information on this requirement, which of the four checklist items are actually respected by this particular requirement? So that means what entities are actually respected, respected in terms of like meeting the requirement given to you. So you just have to find out whether it is meeting or not meeting, that's all. And in final answer, you need to provide which of these option is correct. That means which uh, checklist entity is fulfilled by the requirement provided to you. So if you see, uh, the requirement must be testable. Okay, it has a probable input. The requirement must have an identifier. It has an identifier. Number three requirement must always be having a version. We do not have a version and the requirement must be traceable. It is traceable. So let's see what we have got here. So all the items are respected. Not all the items are respected. One and two are respected. The requirement must be testable. So of course, until unless you have a clear picture on what do you mean by unfamiliar person and using and making a buying transfer. So that sounds a little fishy to uh, actually implement that what in terms of it, in what terms of you're talking about unfamiliar. So they are related to banking domain, bank staff, or what is the audience. So one is also not met. And if you see, in, in that case, we have only three options. All the items are respected, no. One and two, no. It's D, only one, no. The right answer is C, that is, it is met. That is, it should always, uh, sorry, requirement must be having an identifier. That's the only one thing which is met here. So the right answer is C. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be back with the last chapter of the test analyst and we'll be discussing the same way. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding the context. Should you have any query, feel free to comment below. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.